Wig rose and swag border quilt made by unidentified slaves for Mrs. Marmaduke Beckwith Morton. One of the many reasons women made quilts in the 19th century was the opportunity for political expression. Women had little public voice in matters of government or politics and did not win the right to vote until 1920. They could, however, make their opinions known through needle and thread. While the wig rose and swag border quilt may not appear to be political in nature, its design actually constitutes a message of support for a political party known as the Whigs. As you look at the quilt, you'll notice that there are 20 blocks of applique red and pink roses encircled by rosebuds, alternating with 12 blocks of intricately quilted and stuffed wildflowers and ferns. A red and green swag border completes the design. Red, green, and white applique quilts, often with accents of bright yellow, pink, or orange, were particularly popular in the mid-19th century. Quilts in this color scheme frequently featured a stylized floral design with a border of swags, vines, or floral trails. One of the most popular floral applique patterns of this type was called the wig rose. The wig rose pattern was a favorite of supporters of the Whig Party formed around 1833 in opposition to Andrew Jackson's Democratic Party. Members of the Whig Party included Henry Clay and Presidents William Henry Harrison and Zachary Taylor. Despite the fact that the Whig Party had dissolved by 1856, torn apart by the issue of slavery and its expansion into the territories, the beautiful Whig Rose quilt pattern remained popular throughout the rest of the 19th century. Elizabeth Morton, the woman who originally owned this quilt and displayed her support for the Whig Party through its design, was the matriarch of a family of Whigs. In his biography, Elizabeth's stepson, David Morton, is described as, quote, a follower and almost a worshiper of the principles and policies of Henry Clay, the Whig's most prominent leader. Elizabeth's husband and the majority of David's friends were also members of the Whig Party. While this quilt belonged to Elizabeth and its design represented her beliefs, the work was likely executed by two women, Margaret and Ellen, who were slaves in the Morton family household. This information would have been lost to us if one of Elizabeth's descendants hadn't pinned a handwritten note to the back of the piece in 1933, stating that it was quilted by slave women at the plantation in the years before the Civil War. Starting with the note, researchers have been able to piece together the stories of Margaret and Ellen's lives thanks to Morton family remembrances, wills, slave registers, and census records. While Margaret and Ellen's exquisite workmanship enabled Elizabeth's voice to be heard, we're left to wonder about their own beliefs and ideas. What stories would these two women have shared via their needlework if they had had the opportunity? <laughs>